To continue the journey of color grading, today we're going to look at split toning. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. So to continue the journey of color grading, we're going to look at split toning, which is found in Adobe Camera Raw. It's a very simple tool or process to use that can produce wonderful results. And when you use it in conjunction with other elements like selective color and color balance, you're able to start producing your style in color grading. It's powerful to use this tool in conjunction with those others. Of course, it can be used just by itself, but I strongly encourage you to start using these different elements that you're learning in these tutorials for color grading on the retouching series, because this is how you create your style. This is how you develop your artistic look that you will become known for and people will be able to see your work and say, hey, I know that person's work because they see these elements of color and the way you work with color, luminosity and detail to create that style itself. Today's tutorial is very beginner friendly, but for the advanced user of Photoshop, I do encourage you to give it a watch because over the past couple of years of teaching, I've been surprised at how many folks didn't realize that split toning was available in Adobe Camera Raw. They've either went through the process of split toning using different adjustment layers or third party programs. And so it's, it's again, very easy to use and gives you a lot of different results. So let's dive right into the Photoshop's and begin uh, this journey today with split toning. So for today's tutorial, we're going to use split toning on two different images so we can see its effect on the existing foundation of color and light in the photography itself. So this first image, my friend Kiara, we've already worked on this image in other color grading videos of the retouching series. She's photographed against red paper wearing a maroon sweater. And then in this image of my friend Veronica, which we have also worked on images of her in the retouching series, she's photographed against 50% gray paper and she's wearing a navy blue sweater. The split toning effect is going to have two different results based upon these existing foundations of color and light within the photography itself. So what is split toning? Split toning simply means that we're going to take two colors and work them into the image based upon the highlights and the shadows of the image itself. It's a two tone effect that we add on top of the image. Now split toning ultimately works best when you use colors that are complementary to one another. So for today, we're going to use the exact same two colors for both of these images so that again, you can see those overall effects. And we're going to use orange and blue for two different reasons. First and foremost, this is the color wheel. I said in previous videos that the color wheel will be your path and guide to color grading. By the way, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen those videos, look at the card above that will take you to the previous videos in the retouching series where we start discussing color grading itself. So blue and orange are opposite of each other in the color wheel, which means they're complementary to one another. So that's reason number one as to why we're going to use those two colors today for these two different images. But number two, what I've said in previous videos is that Regardless of your ethnicity, if you come from planet Earth, you have red, orange, and yellow in your skin tone already. So since I'm going to choose the color orange, I'm probably going to work that color into the highlights. Why? Because if we use a threshold adjustment layer, this enables us to see where light comes into play, the first places where light comes into play. Right now in the properties window here, we can see that the, this is the histogram of information that at 128 threshold level, which is really midtones, it's right in the balance. These are the strongest areas of light that are coming into the scene immediately. If I take this all the way to the right, now the image has no light in it whatsoever, and I begin to slowly bring it back to the left. Wherever light begins to appear is where the strongest highlights are in the image, the strongest light sources. As we continue to take this over, what do we see? It's on her skin. The strongest light is in her skin. Not her sweater, not the background, but on her face. So, if I choose to use orange in the highlights for split toning, it will take effect immediately in her skin. That's why I'm choosing orange because orange is already in her skin tone to begin with. And I know that may seem a little bit complex if you're new to Photoshop and you're a beginner, but it's just, it's the dots you have to connect. If orange, yellow, and red are already in her skin tone, and I have the option to choose two colors to artistically work into this image, one color for highlights, one for shadow, which is split toning, what color would I want to use for the highlights? Orange. 
And if I go to the color wheel, what is the opposite of orange? It's blue. So then therefore I can use the color wheel to help me decide what goes into the shadows. Now you don't have to use the complementary color to whatever base color you choose. You could do orange for the highlights and purple for the shadows or green or yellow. That's the beauty of split toning. That's the beauty of color grading. And that's the beauty of using split toning in conjunction with other tools for color grading. Because we can do just a straight split tone between orange and blue and then use the selective color adjustment layer or color balance or other elements to start fluctuating different pieces of this picture, adding in those purples and those greens and whatever else. Whatever your artistic mind sees, create it and see its effect. Because is is there a right or wrong answer in photoshop very rarely ultimately the right answer is whatever is pleasing to you as the artist and what you see in your own artwork itself so enough of the the oprah here let's get into the uh, color grading itself uh, with split toning so on this first image i'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting control or command and the letter j and now i have the second layer here in the layer stack and while this is active i'm going to take this layer into adobe camera raw as a filter so i'm going to hit control shift and a or command shift and a and that will open up the dialogue of uh, adobe camera raw brief little side note if you're new to photoshop if you're familiar with lightroom and you're making the jump into photoshop or if you've never used any kind of photo editing software then understand and start using adobe camera raw because adobe camera raw is always available to you in photoshop now, you may have understood that Adobe Camera Raw is essentially a raw converter. It takes a raw file format and gives you the ability to pull that file format into Photoshop, work with it, and then output it as a, or export it, <laughs> output it, export it as like a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever, right? But it's essentially a color, a, a photo editor within itself. This first tab that you see is the basic tab, and you can control some of the basic functions of the image, like exposure, textures, color luminosity detail, the vibrance and saturations. Color luminosity detail is my foundation of what I pushed uh, to people in education for Photoshop to understand Photoshop. So if you're new to Photoshop and you're new to my channel, then again, look at the card above because that will take you to the very beginning of the retouching series where it explains Adobe Camera Raw. But for those folks that are new to Photoshop and you're working your way through it, if inside Photoshop, adjustment layers and tools and brushes and all those things are, are complex and they're difficult to learn, don't give up. If you're working on your imagery, fall back to Adobe Camera Raw because you're using the same module that is the develop module in Adobe Lightroom and you're getting great agency with this tool. So in Adobe Camera Raw, the fifth tab is the split toning tab. And let's take a look at this because, again, it's very simple to use, but you get wonderful results. So at the top, we have highlights. We have hue, saturation. What does this mean? It means simply that we're going to pick a color by sliding the hue slider somewhere. And then we're going to say how much of that color will be visible just in the highlights of the image itself. So you'll notice that it's both, both of these are in zero. So I'm going to slide the hue over to orange and now we're at 33. The number is irrelevant, just pick a color. The saturation is at zero, so nothing has changed in our image. But as I start increasing the overall saturation, we begin to see that the image is becoming more orange. But it is taking place more in her skin tone than anywhere else or on her skin because that was the brightest part of the image. And we're only dealing with the highlights. So now let's come down to shadows and do the same thing. We're going to slide the hue over to a color of blue. Again, the number is irrelevant. I'm just picking a color of blue. And now I'm going to increase the overall saturation of this and I'll take it to 50%. I'm going to take this one to 50% as well. And then now we can see it's taking effect. Both the blue, we see it in her hair in some of the sweater. It's become arguably a little bit more maroon and purple. We see it in the background and we are seeing it take place on her skin because the key is it isn't just targeting whatever the solitary one brightest point of the image is it starts there but it is affecting the highlights are everywhere in this image maybe not so much in these deep shadows here under her arms and her elbows and so forth but it is everywhere it starts at the brightest point and then travels outward in the same way for the shadows we're seeing more of the blue here and then it travels outward and we see it affecting the overall highlights in this so right now you have achieved color grading on one level you've chosen a color of orange and blue they're complements of each other from the color wheel and we've infused it into the overall highlights and the overall shadows into the image 
The final slider that we haven't looked at is the balance slider. And this simply means you can tell Photoshop, I want the split toning to favor the shadows or I want it to favor the highlights, meaning favor the colors that you chose for those two tones. So if I slide it to the left, I'm favoring the overall shadows. And we're seeing that the image is becoming a little bit cooler. There is less of the orange into the scene itself. This is one way to let one of the colors have prevalence. The other way is to return this back to zero and then take one of these colors all the way up. So if I take the saturation point of the shadows and increase it, we're getting a heavy stylized look. Now, again, there's no very rarely is there a right or wrong answer in Photoshop. So if this is a stylized look that you're going for and you like it, then congratulations, you've achieved it right there. But I encourage you or challenge you to continue to explore with this because subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. I often say that in all the education that I do. So if I start to push this balance back just a little bit, favoring the shadows, even more of the image is getting uh, pushed in with the blue tones. But if I take it to the right, I've let the saturation point of the shadows be the strongest it can be. But then if I start pushing this balance back, we're getting even more of a stylized look and effect than what it was here. So if I take it here, we're getting some really strong orange into this image, into the tones of this image, but we never increase the saturation of orange. It's still at 50. So there's a lot to play with here. And the reason why I say this is beginner friendly is because you really only have the one, two, three, four, five sliders to work with. You pick a color under the hue, you pick how powerful the color is in the scene, and then you pick an overall balance. And you can play with all three of these, the, the two saturation points of the highlights and shadows and the balance itself to start seeing a mixture of color that you can work into the scene. And when you feel comfortable with that, then add on a selective color adjustment layer or a color balance adjustment layer and further start refining it. This is what color grading is all about. This is how you develop your artistic style. You choose the colors that work with the scene. You understand the colors and the path to utilize them because of the color wheel, and you begin to just tweak them a little bit, grading them into the image to produce your artwork itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and then I'll take us back into Photoshop, and now we have our layer that has this effect. If you wanna take it away in certain areas, you can use a layer mask and paint it away, and again, you can use other different adjustment layers to start producing different results. Let's go ahead and jump over to the image of Veronica and do the same thing. So Controller Command and the letter J to duplicate the layer, then Controller Command and Shift and A to go into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. And this is always, again, a thing you can fall back to at any point in Photoshop in your work if you need help and you want to do something to your image and you don't know how to do it using the other tools in Photoshop, use Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll come to split toning again and do the same thing. We're going to pick a color of orange and let's pick that color of blue. Let's increase the saturation to 50. I'm just gonna type it in and then select here and type 50 and then hit enter. So instantaneously, there's two things to look at here. This is why one, I like to photograph against gray seamless paper for all of my artwork when I can. Um, if I want that, the, like the photo shoot that I did with Kiara with the red sweater against the red paper, that was a stylized choice and I was fine with that. But I try to often shoot against gray paper because instantaneously we've added blue to that paper and it can look like we have photographed against blue paper itself. Now, for the viewer that looks at this image and understands split toning and utilizes it on the regular, they're going to see that the image has a lot of blue in it already. So they will assume that it was not photographed against blue paper, that it was just some effect of split toning or an effect of color grading. But ultimately, if you're looking for a way to start adding some color to the background itself, gray paper will not steer you in the wrong direction. Now, the second thing to look at is that even though these are balanced, we're seeing a lot of that blue in her skin tone, even though this is the brightest part of the image. So from a perspective of split toning, of color grading, of color harmony, we can increase the saturation of orange and decrease the saturation of blue and we start to see that overall effect but this is something that I personally don't like she looks like an Oompa Loompa and that's not my jam so I'm going to bring this back to 50 I'm going to bring this back down just a little bit and then I'm going to let it favor the highlights so as I bring this down and I push this up so I'm saying favor the highlights in the split toning right but I'm not letting the color be as saturated as strong 
Now we get a pleasant uh, blend of the orange into her skin tone, and we still have the blue. I can push up the saturation of blue, and now we're getting that beautiful two-tone effect or split tone of orange and blue that calls back to that color wheel of color harmony, where we see the complementary colors working together. So I'm going to hit OK and take us back into Photoshop. Here's the after, there's the before. One simple process of split toning, utilizing this color wheel, understanding color harmony, understanding how to work with the colors, we can create a beautiful result. So if you're new to Photoshop, you can color grade. Congratulations. It's right there. It's in Adobe Camera Raw. It's those five sliders. Use some critical thinking. Use your imagination. Subtlety is key and build it up and you can create a wonderful effect inside of Photoshop itself. So I'm not even going to zoom out. That was my final thoughts on this is because color, you know what I am going to zoom out because I want you to see my beautiful face as I ask you for your support on this channel for YouTube. If you're new here and you like the content that you found, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing. New content comes out all the time for photography and Photoshop education. So when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes itself. I encourage you to continue to look at the previous videos in the retouching series, but just experiment experiment looking at the color wheel understanding the colors that are already in the photography in the scene <clears throat> and then work together with them to see how you can blend them to produce a wonderful result so thank you so much for watching and being part of the channel and until next time i will see you out there in the world of photoshop